Now I would like to invite up our, our third and final speaker of this panel, uh, David Bernard Perrault, who is the Vice President of Growing Operations at the Green Organic Dutchman. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to be back here talking about actually growing the plants in this maelstrom of information and where everything's moving so fast all the time. Uh, so I'm currently working at a green organic Dutchman. I've got three years of previous experience, experience working at Worcester Medical Marino Corporation, a Worcester-based company, uh, growing uh, the only certified organic product in the market right now. So growing cannabis in Worcester was a lot of fun. So you'll see a lot of picture from that. Um, as those two gentlemen before I mentioned, it's the third time we see stats like that. I got that picture last night. It changed since um, <laughs> since everybody made their PowerPoint, actually. Uh, we're now up to six people in Quebec. Probably if you look right now, it's probably eight. It's changing so fast. Uh, 46 in Ontario, and it keeps going up. Uh, the way that those uh, licenses were first allocated was a lot to do where, where the main uh, people in Canada are. So a lot of licenses in Ontario, I don't know why we got so little in Quebec. Uh, BC, there was a lot of interest. There's, it's kind of the picture in Canada of growing the cannabis culture is kind of all there. And uh, this is all pharmaceutical grade cannabis. So you have to be licensed under the ACMPR to be able to produce medical cannabis right now. So that means we're producing under a pharmacopoeia, a very strict guideline that caused a lot of hurdle to go through when we're producing. So, uh, the licensing process itself to become a licensed producer uh, is very tedious. It's, it's changing all the time. Uh, so when they first got out with the program, they were really concerned about security, inventory control, patient access. They didn't want to have anything leaking on the black market and stuff like that. So they made you build your old facility. Then they were coming, they were checking, OK, is it safe enough to grow in here? Once you had your facility built, which was a lot of money, then you were given your right to grow. Once you had the right to grow, you had to prove that you could grow a safe product to give it to patients. So you had to destroy a lot of crops to grow just to show. And once you get that, you were getting your sales license, which the buying to get into the market was really expensive. So if you didn't have a solid and or really deep pocket, like five million at least, it was really hard to set up a business. But rules are changing very fast. Uh, we've learned a couple of weeks ago that we don't need vaults anymore. We used to have to store finished product and or garbage in the vault. And to put a bunch of moldy rotting, rotting leaf in a vault doesn't make sense to me. But there's THC in there. It's a controlled substance. We have to regulate with that. Be, just make sure that nobody's going to go dig in your garbage to get high. Because <laughs> it's really hard to find cannabis nowadays. Um, so those are the main focus of the ACMPR. So security, like I just mentioned, everything's under camera. But the big thing is also you, got, you need a federal security clearance to be able to be in presence of controlled substance. And in, in my case, uh, no criminal background or anything, but it took them a year before they issued that, license, that security clearance. So for a year, I wasn't allowed to go in my garden alone to grow the plants. I need to be accompanied by someone that had their clearance and all that. So they were very slow at issuing those licenses at first, uh, slowed down a lot of businesses. Uh, the second really tough part is uh, we're dealing with agricultural crops. So we're growing a plant. It's, there's living fungi, bacteria, mold. A lot of them are beneficial. They don't differentiate in that when you're uh, operating and being regulated by a pharmacopoeia. So I have to test for heavy metal, pesticide residue, but also total microbial count in the leaf. And that's the one that really hurts, uh, especially um, Regarding the patient safety, the only uh, the way to think about that, we need to produce a sterile medicine. It's a pharmaceutical, so we're producing a medicine for some people that have a really uh, low or completely absent immune system. So they need to have a very clean product. But when you're growing that in soil, especially when you're organic and you're relying on a lot of biology in your soil, that you make sure that biology stays down and it doesn't move up your leaf and making your pro you have to irradiate your product which you cannot do when you're certified organic, or sometimes uh, it's not good for uh, brand perception. Nobody wants you to have irradiated product. And uh, patient safety is a big one too, and traceability. So you've got to be able to conduct recalls, show your product is safe, and making sure you're going to pass all those loopholes to just to get to the market. And then um, it does not even mean that the patient is going to come and buy from you too. Uh, so the security clearance was one of the big ones for, uh, to get into this. Also the access to good genetic material. Um, 
You need to have material coming from a federally approved uh, license, cannabis license uh, uh, business. So they're all your competitor. They're not going to sell you their best stuff. So how do you get like to start to grow good stuff? So that's you need to start your own breeding system. Hopefully, seeds going to um, be present in your crops, so then you can save and restart. It's going to be something good coming out of that. Another tough one is the list of approved pesticides for use in cannabis, and this is where. There's still a lot of work to do on the growing side of things as well. Uh, those I've mentioned regulation and medical side, of it, but on the agrological side of things too, we need to test for more uh, product control uh, stuff, uh, pest control product, um, because it's a new uh, drug, it's a new uh, emerging thing. They want to make sure that even if it's been safe for everything before, we still need to get it approved for pesticide, uh, uh, for cannabis. Sorry and. Some of those products too are uh, bacteria that will prevent mold formation. And if you spray a bacteria on your crop that cannot have above certain threshold of bacteria, then you're creating a, creating a false positive and you're shooting yourself in the foot. So it's getting really tough with the limited tool we have to produce a very clean, uh, pest-free and uh, profitable crop. Um, so patient access was also a tough one. Um, Dr. Jardy, you mentioned how uh, they want to be sure that they will prescribe cannabis for the right reason to the right patient and the right strain and all that. Stroke. From the physician side, it's also very hard to get a prescription. And also from our side to sell and get access to that market, uh, we can only sell to patients that have a prescription from a, a member of the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. We verify that there's a real prescription, then we verify it's a real doctor get all the paperwork and once they get that we need to monitor the amount of cannabis that they get on a monthly basis and making sure we will never go above that uh, amount or we can get in trouble but they can go and register with three five other licensed producer there's no centralized system for that there's so there's a lot of work to consolidate this whole industry and making sure that it's going to be um, a good one and profitable for and safe for the patient record keeping is a big one we need to create all the records for all of our patient and batches for up to five years it takes a lot of room we're also not allowed to advertise for a company or product. We're not allowed to show pictures of the product to a non-patient. Uh, so the only way we can uh, build our brand mostly is producing a very high quality product. Being certified organic was one of our strategy in our case. But also when people go to the Health Canada website, they show the list of uh, 89 producers today. Uh, so you got to pick one in all of those. How do you do that? Mostly patient reviews so customer services and a quality of product comes back uh, very, are being very important. And we're also only allowed to do mail orders. So you gotta show up to our door, we're allowed to have a storefront. And uh, yeah, I, even in BC when we had more dispensaries in Vancouver than we were at school, uh, we could not sell to dispensaries, we would lose our license because those guys are in the gray or completely illegal area, they're just still rated. So, and now, under the same kind of production condition, uh, we're going to have to produce uh, cannabis for the rear recursion. It's a race right now. It's going crazy. For within the last year, the number of licensed producers have more than doubled. Everybody wants to get in. Uh, Sometimes just they see a dollar sign, and every, you, you go to buy supplies, you get a 30 person cannabis tax. If it's a fertilizer for greenhouse, it's good, but for cannabis, they just had a couple zero at the end sometimes, so you got to do your shopping right. Um, and uh, it's going to be under the same quality, so what's going to be the real difference for people? So if you have a prescription, you're not going to pay tax on a medicine, but if you're for recreational use, most likely uh, you're going to have to pay a tax. And like I haven't touched on, it's going to be to the province to decide how they want to distribute that. It's not going to be in the same location where you can buy alcohol. They're never going to let that go through, but uh, the mostly likely we're going to keep the dispensary system out of the west and mostly like uh, government and private store coming more toward the east. So what it means for us as producer and business that wants to get in there and the amount of licensed producer that are come in line, it's quickly going to become commoditized. We've got a high margin now on which we should capitalize, but the, pri the margin will compress. We're going to have to become better, more efficient at producing, do some breeding, and um, make sure that the, our production cost will be very low. So this is a picture of um, some friends and clients in Oregon, and those are cannabis trees, not the Christmas trees. So they're allowed to grow outside. Those have a two acres farm, very low production cost outside, and they can still match the more uh, 
the, the internal organ quality control, which is a, makes a little bit more sense in some area. And also, we're going to see a lot of export into the international market because a lot of other um, jurisdictions are legalizing medical and going to go toward recreational as well. So in the meantime, as they don't yet have a market, uh, uh, inside market to produce, if we get a certification, greater manufacturing practices, GMP or ISO 9000, we'll be able to export to those markets. So there's a good opportunity there as well. But tremendous amount of research is needed uh, for bre breeding, improving genetics, especially now that genetic is scarce. Uh, we're doing pretty good on yield and THC content. That's what the, the dudes were doing in their basement, breeding those strains for big buds that smell like lemon and get you super baked. But now we want to see more mechanization, some uniformity in the flower, a good structure, shortening the duration of the flowering time. It's going to be a really big one for the producer in greenhouses. Everything finishing earlier at the same time. A lot of medical research is needed as well to understand why this kind of this is work in so many different cases. Uh, we got a lot of this entourage effect. Uh, all those 100 cannabinoids, those 100 terpenes, they work. How do they interact together? What do we prescribe? How do we grow it? I've seen some strains of cannabis that I've grown up tested at 18% THC, change relative humidity, change the light fertilizer, it's now 28% humidity. We need to standardize that to make sure we're going to have safe, reliable product of very high quality. Uh, a lot of new product will emerge. Uh, I haven't mentioned infused product. We can have infused beverages that have a fast onset and offset. You get a light effect after 10 minutes, and after 40 minutes, you, you're good. You're not high anymore, but you didn't have to inhale or anything like that. So edibles, uh, infused tea, coffee, beverages, soda, and to produce all of those new um, equipment to make those new product, there's a lot, a lot of work that needs to be done. Mechanization of the harvesting process in Canada is something that we really need. We don't even know how we're going to harvest those massive greenhouses that we're producing, that we're building right now. So a lot of work for agrologists, students, anybody that works in food, there's going to be a lot of good opportunities. And it is truly an opportunity once in a lifetime, once in a century. Last time something like that happened was the end of a prohibition of alcohol. So there's a lot of good work. And if you're passionate, you want to work hard, there is great thing we can do right now. And the new trend right now that people are talking about is regenerative agriculture. It's not sustainable anymore. And the best analogy is like an obese man cannot keep or cannot sustain the, uh, the rate at which he's gaining weight and still be alive. So he needs to find a way to design better system, and cannabis, I think, could be a nice economical driver to be able to do that. Use those, RA, those very high margin in the meantime to be able to find those new products. This is a very nice hybrid greenhouse we are building in Valleyfield, close to here, that we're going to be producing our, the largest organic cannabis production in the world. With another former colleague from McGill, too, we developed a biofertilizer that was designed for cannabis, but we found that works in the rest of the other crop, causing increase up to 9% in certain crops. So there's a lot of opportunity for all of us to improve and make it right, do something really great. So thank you, guys. Yeah.